The flesh scale system and its consequences have been a disaster for violinists everywhere. Well, not the system per se, but certainly the way in which it's most often taught. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Tone Based Violin. So, real question, why aren't you practicing scales? Couldn't have anything to do with this little book here, would it? If your experience is anything similar to mine, then somebody has probably lobbed this giant blue tome in your general direction at some point, and while the flesh scale system is probably one of the most, if not the most, used violin scale book out there, it kind of tends to have the opposite of the intended effect and make students not want to practice scales. But all that is about to change today because I'm going to show you a better way to approach scales that is going to ensure you want to practice them, and guess what? I'm still going to use Carl Flesch's infamous scale system. But for this, we gotta head to the practice room. For those of you who don't know, Carl Flesch was essentially the most important violin teacher in Europe around the turn of the 20th century, which essentially means he was the most important violin teacher in the world at the time. Now, the thing to remember about the Flesch scale book is that it's not really a scale book. It's actually much more of a reference book. So Carl Flesch actually wrote a three-volume series called The Art of Violin Playing. The first book is about technique, the second is about interpretation, and the third, you guessed it, is the infamous Carl Flesch scale system. And if you'd like to get more information on this in more erudite language, then you should definitely check out the article I wrote on this very subject published over at Tone Based Violin's blog. As always, a link will be in the description below. The blog's free. You should check it out. Anyway, in those first two volumes, Carl Flesch lays out his reasoning for all of the craziness you see in the Carl Flesch scale system. And for those of you lucky enough to actually have been given a sane scale book as a child, let me fill you in on what's in this book. Each major and minor key has one octave scales on each string. Of course, three octave scales. Scales in thirds. Octaves, fingered octaves, which all tend to go up and down constantly for some reason, tenths, harmonics, double harmonics, and an assortment of seven different arpeggios, broken thirds, and chromatics that, you guessed it, have to be played in every string, every octave, and in every double stop. If you weren't familiar with the flesh sill system before this, maybe now you understand why I didn't practice scales much as a kid. Or really for most of my life until I figured out what I'm going to show you in this video. So if Carl Flesch was the best violin teacher of his time, then why did he write the scales like this? Well, if you go back to what I said about this being a reference book and how it's the third volume in the series, you cannot understand what he's trying to get at in the scale book if you're not already somewhat familiar with the first two volumes in the series, especially the first volume on technique. He explains in the first volume that he was identifying the patterns that he thought a violinist would most often encounter in repertoire. That was, of course, being scales, arpeggios, broken thirds, and chromatics. And he thought to himself, well, if a violinist will practice these and become really familiar in every double stop, scale, and octave, then he actually will have to spend less time practicing repertoire. For Carl Flesch, this was actually meant to save the violinist's time. If you are familiar with all of these patterns, you're probably going to have to spend less time practicing those particular patterns whenever you encounter them in repertoire. <laughs> And I think he's actually 100% right about this, which is why I still use the flesh scale system for my own playing and when I teach. The issue, again, is not understanding what he's getting at and then trying to shove all of this down either your own throat or your student's throat all at once. If you do try to practice everything in the flesh scale book in a single key all at once, you're likely to just not be able to practice anything effectively, burn out completely, and then never touch scales again. Which is a shame because I don't know a single concert artist that doesn't practice scales regularly. Actually, I take that back, I do know one. It's uh, Ilya Kotler. But if you don't happen to be the violinist that is the gold medalist at more major violin competitions than anyone else in history, 
you should probably start getting comfortable with practicing scales. In the words of Yasha Heifetz, Many students are afraid of scales because, number one, they don't practice them. And, you know, you're usually afraid of something you're not familiar with, rather than scales being afraid of them. So now that I've made that introduction, how do you go about practicing and teaching the flesh scale system? To quote an old African proverb, the same way you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't eat any elephants. I'm sure that's legal. So step one, learn all major and minor keys in three octave scales and arpeggios. Don't worry about double stops. Don't worry about single string scales. Don't worry about broken thirds, chromatics, or anything else. Just learn the basic three octave scales and arpeggios in every single key. Learn to do it well and take your time. Don't take the advice you should change your key every day or change your key every week if you're still struggling with B flat major. As a matter of fact, I'd suggest before you move on to any other key, pick one key and learn to do that scale really, really well. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Just get really good at three octave scales and arpeggios in a single key. The thing is, if you're really familiar with the scale in one key, it's actually much easier to translate that scale over to another key than it is to be broadly familiar with a bunch of keys but not really have devoted enough time to any of them to play them well. Now, once you've done that, it's time for step two. Pick one key, again, similar pattern you're gonna find here, pick one key and slowly add in all of the other forms of the scales and arpeggios and broken thirds and everything else you wanna do that's in the flesh scale system. Add one thing in week by week. You see, it's much easier to maintain something than it is to learn it. So since you've already learned all of your three octave scales and arpeggios, that's not gonna take you very much practice time. So you can now take that extra practice time and put it towards learning to play third scales really well. And then once you've learned third scales, well, it's not gonna take a lot of practice time to maintain that. So you can take that extra time and put it towards learning octave scales, or broken thirds, or your chromatic scales, or all of the scales and arpeggios on the A string, or D string, or whatever it is that you're trying to add next. Eventually, you're going to piecemeal your way through the entire scale system of a particular key, and you'll have done it in a way that does not overwhelm you and ensures that you don't have to take up too much practice time. By this point, you should be able to get through all the scales, arpeggios, variations, and double stops, and be able to play all of them quite well. Best part of all, you won't be overwhelmed by trying to have learned all of that at once. And step three, now you can start taking those skills and practicing them in other keys. As I said before, if you get really good at scales in one key, it's not that difficult to translate them over to another key. At this point, you'll have truly fulfilled the purpose of Carl Flesch's scale system, and you'll be a far better violinist than you ever could have dreamed if you'd been ignoring scale practice. Now, one last thing before I go. Expect this process to take a lot of time. Years, maybe. It probably won't take years, but you should expect it to and you should try to enjoy the process, not see it as a destination you're trying to achieve. Scales will be with you, hopefully, until your dying day. There's no rush. Enjoy the process of getting better and better at each scale, no matter how long that takes. I mean, you've already gone several years without practicing scales, right? Now, to leave you, there's a very enlightening story that Carl Flesch tells in volume one of his series. Once he was asked by a colleague how much he had to practice in order to master the fingered octaves in Paganini's 17th Caprice. <laughs> implying that he must have spent hours and hours every day to learn how to do it properly. And Carl Flesch replied, oh, I've only practiced that about 15 or 20 minutes a day, but I have been practicing it 15, 20 minutes a day for the past five years. I'm Tobias Murphy for Tone Bass Violin, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Go practice scales.